You don't have a chance to get your eyes ready for 99 with nasty breaking stuff, but you've had a great last couple weeks. What is the key when you're not getting the reps on the field to make sure that you're ready when called upon? Yeah, I think it's really just getting in the cages, working with six, working with DC, uh, mixing up timing, doing different drills in there to to kind of disrupt your timing because at the end of the day, that's that's the hardest part when, when you're not playing too often is, uh, is, is getting on time. So... Uh, it's a combination of, of getting in there, doing a bunch of different things in the cage, off the machine, and flips and overhand and things like that, as well as just trying to keep the swing as simple as possible and uh, you know, eliminate as many uh, unnecessary movements as possible. What's your favorite drill in there for, for gearing up? Honestly, it's uh, right now we're doing a lot of just, just overhand, kind of more BP stuff, but I'll you know, start, start at the back of the box and then move up and get closer and then move back so that I'm always kind of working on different timing and uh, you know, having, to, having to get ready uh, you know, for, for different pitches. They talk about how pitchers that are larger frame, it's harder for them to consistently keep their mechanics because there's a lot more going on, a lot more room for error. Do you feel that as a bigger hitter, that that is a factor as well? Do you find it harder to keep your mechanics with your swing sound consistently because of your larger frame? I think it can be, and I think uh, that's maybe partially why it's such a big emphasis for me is keeping my swing as simple as possible. And I think uh, the, the less moving parts I have, the better. Um, I, think, I think similar with pitching, but with hitting one of the one of the one of the big keys for being a bigger frame is that you know I have the ability to hit for more power and I have longer levers and I think it's just getting those levers in the right position to uh, to do some damage and uh, the simpler I can make my swing the better it is. You came over to the Nationals at the trade deadline a couple of years ago. You were with Toronto. Brad Hand goes there. You come here. How much you had gotten some time I believe with the Blue Jays at the major league level prior to the trade, but this has really opened things up for you in terms of being consistently on a major league roster and getting a chance to do the things that you've done the last few weeks. Do you think back to that trade as a defining moment in your career in that it's landed you on a major league roster and, and given you this opportunity? Oh, absolutely. I'm, uh, I'm really happy to be here. I'm really happy that that, that trade happened. And, you know, I had, a, I had a great experience with the Blue Jays. That was the team that, that drafted me. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy I was able to make it up to the big leagues with them and, and debut with them. But... Uh, coming over here and getting that opportunity to to play and be in the big leagues every day is uh, is huge and uh, I couldn't be happier to be here. You and Kbert now have an opportunity as you know relatively young catchers to work with a few young pitchers that hopefully you guys are going to be the core of this team going forward in terms of the battery. You know you're going to be working with McKenzie, Josiah's in there as well. Um, Talk to me about those two guys and how you're trying to develop some some chemistry, get on the same page, and how you've seen them develop along with you. Yeah, I think it's awesome. I think, I mean, not only from a pitching standpoint, but we got young position players all over the place, and uh, I think there's just so much energy going around, and uh, I think I think everyone's pulling for each other, and everyone's just excited. Uh, working with JoJo, working with with McKenzie has been been great, and uh, learning from them, from from you know the different organizations they've been in and what they've been working on, and. Uh, I think uh, I think it's just fun working with them and coming to the park every day. And I know when when I see them on the lineup card and, and I know they're starting, uh, I'm excited because they're going to give us a good game. Last one, Riley. Uh, Henry Blanco is constantly a presence for you and, and Kay Baird. He's right there at the very corner of the dugout, wherever we happen to be playing, <laughs> watching everything that you're doing. Um, he caught in the big leagues for a long, long time. Yeah. What have been the biggest things that you've taken away from from Henry and tried to? Uh, turn into positives in your game. Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, for starters, you know, he's he's dealt with uh, you know being being a backup catcher, and uh, I know him and I have talked a lot about about playing playing in a backup role, playing you know once or twice a week, and uh, you know the differences that come with that, as well as you know in game, you know controlling the pitching staff and controlling the run game, and uh, so much of the of the leadership element of catching that is, is so important, I think, uh, is what is what he's been crucial with, uh, and along with all the all the receiving stuff, all the all the all the throwing stuff and blocking. Uh, you know, he's he, he's a great guy to have in your corner, and uh, I enjoy working with him. And he's uh, he's definitely kept things fun and uh, keeping us smiling all the time. Riley Adams, plugging away, getting hits all over the joint recently. Riley, keep it up, and thanks for the time. Thanks, Dan. For sure.